Well, good morning and a very warm welcome to this time of prayer and reflection. It's really good to be uh, with you again. Our theme for today's reading and uh, the reflection is uh, creation. And uh, we're going to be thinking a little bit about how creation uh, enables us to uh, worship God and to see the majesty and awesomeness of God. One of the things that I have particularly uh, missed during this time of uh, these weeks of lockdown has being able to uh, go down to the Downs for a walk. Um, it doesn't seem like a, an essential journey. Well, I think I could make an argument that it's an essential journey, but it probably wouldn't be in the spirit of the law uh, to go down there just for a walk. But actually, one of the wonderful things about for me about walking on the Downs is that sense of uh, the vastness of the, uh, the, the, view, the view and being able to your being able for your eyes to be able to reach uh, a distant horizon and just to be able to see uh, the, the wonder of creation laid out before you and it's an idea that has been around as long as humanity uh, the idea that creation is a window onto the creator, uh, the creator God, and a means of being able to praise and worship his awesomeness in the best possible sense of that word. A little later on I shall be uh, singing hymn number 193 from the Red Hymn Books for those of you uh, following along uh, in the books yourselves. Um, it's, uh, uh, it's called All Heaven Declares the Glory of the Risen Lord, a sense that uh, all of creation declares God's glory. So we're going to uh, begin as we always do by <clears throat> lighting a candle. Do light your own candle if you have one to hand as well. And we light the candle as a reminder of God's presence with us and his love for us. So as we begin, let's just spend a moment or two in quiet. And I'll open with a prayer. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you now and forever. Amen. Our reading this morning is taken from one of the Psalms, Psalm uh, 19. The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. Day after day they pour forth speech. Night after night they reveal knowledge. They have no speech, they use no words. No sound is heard from them. Yet their voice goes out into all the earth, their words to the ends of the world. In the heavens God has pitched a tent for the sun. It is like a bridegroom coming out of his chamber, like a champion rejoicing to run his course. It rises at one end of the heavens and makes its circuit to the other. Nothing is deprived of its warmth. The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The statutes of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. The precepts of the Lord are right, giving joy to the heart. The commands of the Lord are radiant, giving light to the eyes. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. The decrees of the Lord are firm, and all of them are righteous. They are more precious than gold, much pure gold. They are sweeter than honey, than honey from the honeycomb. By them your servant is warned. In keeping them there is great reward. But who can discern their own errors? Forgive my hidden faults. Keep your servant also from willful sins. May they not rule over me. Then I will be blameless, innocent of great transgression. May these words of my mouth this meditation of my heart 
be pleasing in your sight, Lord, my rock and my redeemer. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So a short reflection on uh, that psalm, Psalm 19. On Monday this week, we started another Christianity Explored course in the Benefice. In the video for the first session, the presenter is filmed standing in a beautiful valley at the foot of tall mountains soaring up on all sides and the water of the lake lapping at the shoreside. Instantly, our thoughts are drawn to God, the creator, who made the universe and all creation. I've always been a sucker for creation and find it one of the most powerful expressions of God's character, his nature and his love. I've recently been enjoying the latest series by David Attenborough on television, A Perfect Planet, and I never fail to be utterly awe-inspired by the wonders of nature, the extraordinary variety of creatures with whom we share this fragile planet and the sheer abundance of life that it supports. Again, I just can't watch something like that without being even more convinced than I already am of the existence of a creator God who made all things. I'm always amazed that someone like David Attenborough, who has spent his entire life studying the natural world in such detail, remains an agnostic, believing that nothing is or can be known about the existence or nature of God. But no such ambivalence for our psalmist this morning, who marvels at the wonder and beauty of creation in the opening verses of that psalm, recognising the glory of God in the heavens, in the stars, the sun and the moon, the day and the night, before going on to warn about the consequences of our sinful human nature. For thousands of years, men and women have looked up to the night skies and reflected on the vastness of the universe and our own relative insignificance. As the Bishop of Repton, Jan McFarlane, puts it, it's all too easy for our daily cares and troubles to cause us to become earthbound, eyes down, shoulders slumped, weighed down by the sadness and fear that surrounds us. Perhaps we should resolve then, at least once a day, to lift up our eyes and to wonder at the vastness of creation, and then to praise the Creator who cares for every hair on our tiny heads. Our troubles may seem less significant in the context of eternity. So we come now to our short time of prayer. So let us pray. Gracious Father, we pray for your church throughout the world. We pray for its leaders, especially praying for our archbishops, Justin and Stephen. In this diocese, we pray for our bishops, Martin, Ruth and Will. We hold before you our archdeacons, especially praying for the Archdeacon of Hastings, Edward Dowler. We pray that you would give them strength and uh, resolve and courage as they uh, look to fulfil uh, their often very difficult roles. We pray for our rural dean in this deanery, Mark Lloyd, and for all who minister uh, in the deanery, ordained and lay. And Father, in this benefice, we pray for a renewal of your church and pray that your uh, your spirit would guide us as we look to our future vision of growth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As we uh, look back to the start of uh, the Christianity Explored course that began this week, uh, so Lord, we pray for Uh, those who will be taking part, both those leading the course and those 
uh, participating. Father, we pray that you would be powerfully at work in the lives of those taking part in that course. We ask that you would open their eyes to your promises of salvation through your son, Jesus. And we ask that this course would, uh, that through this course, you would plant uh, seeds of faith in their hearts and that through your spirit, those seeds may be watered, tended and nurtured and that they might bloom into a full and living faith in you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we remember those in positions of leadership around the world. We pray in particular for Joe Biden as he uh, begins uh, his office of president's president in the United States. We pray for our own prime minister and for our government and for all uh, leaders of the nations. Grant them wisdom, Lord, and courage to do what is right in the interests of those that they've been elected to serve. We pray that they may have a broad vision and seek to work together for the benefit of humanity. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We continue to pray for our schools, for the teachers trying hard to support both pupils in school and those learning from home. We remember too those parents struggling to balance the needs of uh, their own paid work and the need to support their children in homeschooling. We pray for those young people with limited or no access to the technology that they need. But above all, Lord, we pray for the well-being of our young people. We pray for their mental health and for their social needs and ask that they may receive the support uh, that they need in these difficult and trying times and that they may be able to return to uh, schools uh, safely as soon as possible. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Father, we give you heartfelt thanks for the excellent progress being made with the vaccination rollout. We remember those uh, working tirelessly in the care and health sectors at the moment, for our doctors and for nurses in our hospitals, for the staff and the volunteers and for the military uh, who have been brought in to assist with the vaccination programme. Father, we struggle to imagine the pressures that so many of our health workers are working under at the moment. We pray that you would strengthen them and that when they feel that they have nothing left in the tank, nowhere else to turn, that you may be able to restore them, pick them up and strengthen them, Lord. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer and the collect for this week. Lord Jesus Christ, light of the nations and glory of Israel, make your home among us and present us pure and holy to your heavenly Father, your God and our God. Amen. So we gather all our prayers and praises into one as we say together the words that Jesus himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. I'm going to uh, sing this short hymn, uh, All Heavens Declare the Glory of the Risen Lord. <clears throat> All heaven declares the glory of the risen Lord. Who can compare 
with the beauty of the Lord. Forever he will be the Lamb upon the throne. I gladly bow the knee and worship him alone. I will proclaim the glory of the risen Lord, who once was slain to reconcile the world to God. Forever you will be the Lamb upon the throne. I gladly bow the knee and worship you alone. Well, thank you for joining me this morning. A reminder that uh, we will be sharing a pre-recorded service uh, this Sunday, uh, which will be available to watch both on our Facebook page and uh, on the website. And if you subscribe to our YouTube channel, uh, you'll get a notification when that goes live um, on Sunday morning at 9.30. So do join us for that if you can. So we come to our final blessing. The Lord bless you and watch over you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look kindly on you and give you his peace. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon us and remain with us and all those we love and pray for, this day and always. Amen.